we've come to communion, the Lord's Supper. We, during this time, we're going to eat a piece of bread and drink a cup of juice together in remembrance of Jesus, proclaiming his sacrificial death on our behalf and looking forward to his return. I want to make sure that everyone has a copy of God's word for themselves. So if you don't have a Bible with you, can you raise your hand? We have men on both sides who can give you one. If you don't own a Bible or if you need a new one, this is yours to keep. We're going to be eventually looking at Hebrews 10 together. So you can open your Bibles there in preparation. But for now, just listen. I want us to consider Israel under Mosaic law and what it meant for God to be with them. For Old Testament Israel, the mercy seat above the Ark of the Covenant was where God, God's presence would be with his people. However, access to and worship of God was restricted from his people. The Ark of the Covenant was to be separated from his people, contained in an area of the tabernacle and then the temple called the Holy of Holies. God and his holiness were kept separate from the people, behind veils. Into this second chamber, behind the second veil where God's presence was, only the high priest could enter on behalf of the people to seek forgiveness for their unknown sins and only once per year, and not without bringing blood, which he was to offer for himself and for the sins of the people. Every day on Yom Kippur, on the Day of Atonement, when one of the people, the high priest, got to actually approach God's presence, and even daily in almost every other prescribed worship practice for Israel, there was blood, lots and lots of blood, all over the people, all over the altar, all over the instruments, sacrificed over and over and over again by the priests. It was all a reminder of God's holiness, but also quite poignantly, it was a regular reminder of the worshiper's sin and separation that that sin brought from a holy God. I just summarized much of Hebrews 9. Now look down at your Bibles together and let's read Hebrews 10.3, commenting on those day of atonement, year after year, bloody sacrifices. It says in Hebrews 10.3, in those sacrifices, there is a reminder of sins year by year for it is impossible for the blood of bulls and goats to take away sins those sacrifices were a reminder to Israel what were they a reminder of look at 10:3 look down at your bible it says explicitly it was a reminder of their sin the word here for reminder, it's the exact same Greek word that Jesus uses in Luke twenty two nineteen, and in 1 Corinthians eleven twenty four 24, and 25 to describe the remembrance of the Lord's Supper. Every time we take this meal, representing a body broken and blood spilt, it too is a reminder, a remembrance. But what is the Lord's Supper? a reminder and remembrance of our sin no Jesus said do this in remembrance of me it's a regular reminder not of our sin in the way that the old repetitive sacrificial system was but of Jesus's once and for all sacrifice and a calling to mind of his life death looking forward to his resur or in resurrection looking forward to his impending return Jesus's sacrifice was far superior to that of the blood of bulls and goats Jesus is expressly not being re-sacrificed every time we eat this meal together 
as the Catholic Church detestably and heretically teaches. There is no sacrifice, there is no forgiveness, and there is no merit that comes through the eating and drinking. Rather, we eat and drink to regularly, regularly remember Jesus' once and for all sacrifice that took place on the cross 2,000 years ago, a sacrifice that actually cleanses, actually forgives, actually conquers death, that actually tore the veil of separation between us and God, allowing us to have the confidence to draw near to God with a sincere heart and full assurance of faith. So if you're a Christian, if you have placed your faith in Jesus and have been cleansed, forgiven, reconciled, made new by grace alone, through faith alone, in Christ alone, then this time of communion is for you. It's right, of, it's right for you to repent of sins at this time. If you're aware of sins, confess them to the Lord and turn now. But do it knowing that your ability to take this bread and juice with confidence is not dependent on the quality of your obedience this week, whether good or bad. This is a regular remembrance of the once and for all death that actually conquers sin, actually cleanses your heart and consciences. It's a body and blood far more effective than those of bulls and goats that had to be offered over and over and over again. Hebrews 10, 14, for by one offering, he has perfected for all time those who are sanctified. If you're not a Christian, Jesus' sacrifice was not on your behalf. If you won't believe, you will stand before God with your sins on you. The difference between Christians and not Christians is not some presence or absence of sinfulness. It's that Jesus' sacrifice paid for our sins and changed us from the heart. And if you are not a Christian, you will stand before God with your sins still on you, and you will be rightly judged and cast out of God's presence into eternal suffering. And so now with, at communion, you can't rightly remember a sacrifice and provision that isn't yours. So if by your own admission, by your own assessment, you're not a believer, let the bread and juice pass. But while you still have breath, you have a chance to turn and repent. Jesus died so that sinners like you and like me could be saved. So please believe, don't leave here without being reconciled to God by grace through faith. Speak to whoever brought you, somebody next to you, or come after the service to these doors in the front on your left. One of the leaders will be available to pray with you. So let's take the Lord's Supper together, each on your own. As you prepare your heart to do that, before the men come, I, I want to just read a few sections from Hebrews 10, and then the men will serve us. Starting in Hebrews 10, 1. For the law, read along with me, since it has only a shadow of the good things to come and not the very form of these things, can never by the same sacrifices which they offer continually year by year make perfect those who draw near. Otherwise, they would not have ceased to be offered because the worshipers having once been cleansed would no longer have had consciousness of sins. But, those but in those sacrifices, there is a reminder of sins year by year for it is impossible for the blood of bulls and goats to take away sins. Jump ahead to 1010. By this... We have been sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. Every priest stands daily ministering and offering time after time the same sacrifices which can never take away sins. But Jesus, having offered one sacrifice for sins for all time, sat down at the right hand of God waiting from that time onward until his enemies be made a footstool for his feet. 
For by one offering he has perfected for all time those who are being sanctified. And the Holy Spirit also testifies to us For after saying, this is the covenant that I will make with them after those days, says the Lord, I will put my law upon their heart and on their mind, I will write them. Then he says, and their sins and their lawless deeds, I will remember no more. Now where there is forgiveness of these things, there is no longer any offering for sin. Therefore, brethren, since we have confidence to enter the holy places by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way, which he inaugurated for us through the veil that is his flesh. And since we have a great high priest over the house of God, let us draw near with a sincere heart in full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled clean from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering, for he who promised is faithful. And let us consider how to stimulate one another to love and good deeds not forsaking our own assembling together as is the habit of some, but encouraging one another all the more as you see the day drawing near. Men, please serve us. Let's remember Jesus by taking communion on your own together.